On episode 346 of Nintendo Switchcraft, it's time for E3 2019 predictions. Let's get ready for Nintendo Switchcraft. everybody switchcraft is brought to you live three times a week on tuesdays and thursdays at 3 p.m u.s eastern and on saturday at whatever time i can get to it head on over to twitch.tv slash run jump stomp to be part of the fun this episode of switchcraft is brought to you by patron that chap zap get switchcraft and all my other shows ad free for as little as a dollar by joining the patreon over at patreon.com slash run jump stomp you can also leave a voicemail for the show by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash voicemail from any device, and I may even play it on the show. I want to take a second and thank the people who have been sending in the, uh, it's, uh, um, hey, this is so-and-so from wherever, and you're listening to Nintendo Switchcraft. I have not had a chance to edit those so that they're all the same volume and stuff so I can insert them, but that is a project that I'm going to be doing as soon as I can, so keep them coming. Um, you can also call in and do the same thing for run, jump, stomp as well. And for stadia cast. So again, go to run, jump, stomp.com slash voicemail. And once you're there, click on the show that you want to leave a voicemail for, leave a voicemail, and I will use it on the show. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> that being said, it's time for some E3 Predictions for 2019. Tunnel Runner from CBS Electronics, where the excitement never ends. I'm not trapped. I'm not trapped. <clears throat> All right. I'm sorry. I've got a cough. Oh, my goodness. That was not fun. All right. So uh, I, I, I am currently on the mend from being sick. So my voice is still a little hoarse and I have to cough every once in a while. And it's getting really... Um, a very productive cough, if you know what I mean, and I don't like that. So that's that's why uh, I may just mute myself and cough every once in a while, and I apologize. But that being said, the show must go on. Let's talk about Nintendo's E3. Um, man, oh man, th- th- we've got a lot. Nintendo has a lot going on, and honestly. Like, I feel like some of the games that are coming out should have come out in the first half of the year. The first half of the year with Nintendo has been pretty light on content, especially first-party stuff. There's been tons of third-party stuff to play on the Switch, and that's fantastic. But Nintendo really hasn't uh, put out that much. And there's a lot of games that we know are coming out in 2019 because Nintendo's told us 2019 and we don't know very much about those games. So making predictions for this year's E3 for Nintendo is pretty easy, I think. Um, They've got a lot to pack in. They've got a lot of games to tell us about. And I want to talk about the games that... First off, these are the games that we know are on the way from Nintendo. Either games that are coming out in 2019 or 2020 or... As yet, we don't know yet. I'm not going to sit here and list them all. Let's talk about them uh, one piece at a time. <clears throat> and I, I like made some notes on my iPad today. So uh, Animal Crossing. All right. We know that that's coming in 2019. Uh, at the end of a recent, not recent, but at the end of a direct, uh, they kind of did the fake out where they were like, Isabel, and then she joined Smash. And then we're like, oh, okay. And then we were like, oh, wait a second. We're getting an Animal Crossing game for Nintendo Switch, which, I mean, we all knew was going to be something that would happen at some point. And Nintendo finally told us when that is, or or told us that it was coming this year. And that's really all that we know about it. We like, there's been no details. Nintendo has been super quiet. So, what am I expecting? I don't know what I'm expecting. Um, I actually, there's one thing that I am expecting from Animal Crossing. I'm expecting some some kind of integration with Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. And if you don't know what that is, that is the mobile version of Animal Crossing that you can play on your phone 
or on your iPad or whatever. Uh, that's the mobile version of, of Animal Crossing. And I expect that there will be some sort of integration with that uh, because the, the more that you are engaged with a game, the longer you are likely to play it. And um, having those two communicate with each other, I think is a very, very good move. M mostly because it will keep the people engaged with Animal Crossing for a longer period of time. And it'll probably bring people back to mobile later on. Plus, it will, you know, I'm sure that there's some people who've been playing the game on mobile who've never played an Animal Crossing before. So having things where, where it, you know, it pops up on your screen and is like, hey, you know all that cool stuff that you own? Well, now you own it in Animal Crossing on Switch. And so some people might be, well, I may actually go ahead and pick that up and try that out. Like that, that's a very um, attractive prospect. So I do expect to hear something about uh, Animal Pro Crossing Pocket Camp being integrated with the regular Animal Crossing. Outside of that, I don't know what else to expect for Animal Crossing. What do I hope? I hope that when I can, I hope that I can set a, a, a little flag that makes it so that uh, my Animal Crossing world is available uh, when I'm not online so that like I can have like a little store and people can come to my store and buy bananas and strawberries or what other ever kind of stuff that I may be selling. Like that kind of stuff would be really, really cool. This asynchronous multiplayer that I know Nintendo likes asynchronous stuff. So I like the idea of asynchronous multiplayer coming to Animal Crossing. I also want to be able to go and visit like my son's town or my wife's town uh, when we're like together and walk around and maybe, maybe work together towards a goal like... Uh, hey, instead of just coming over and just wandering around my town, which is what it felt like on the 3DS, and I'll admit, I I, I enjoyed playing Animal Crossing um, New Leaf on the 3DS a lot. I didn't get super far into it uh, because other things distract me, shiny things. Um, but the idea of being able to go into somebody else's world and help them with stuff like hey, let's all go and, and knock down all the trees and, and pick up all the, the stuff and uh, maybe go fishing and, and try and have a goal, like a quest that you can work on with other people. I think that that would be really cool. And um, I, I hope that that kind of thing is. In fact, I think almost everything about Animal Crossing that I'm hoping for is something like that is based on multiplayer, at least for me. Uh, so that's what I'm hoping for. Other games that that uh, we know are coming, uh, Bayonetta 3, I would really like to get a release date on that oh, and a release date for Animal Crossing. And I, I do think that that's what Nintendo's E3 is going to be about this year. It's going to be, here's a release date for this, 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 and this. All these games that you already know about, but you don't know when they're coming out. Uh, so for Bay Bayonetta 3, all we've got so far is it's in development. Uh, we've seen like uh, Bayonetta's like uh, her high heels as she walked away from the camera for a second and then a three. And that's all we know. It would be nice to have some kind of plot or, you know, some gameplay footage. I do expect to see some because uh, Platinum Games and Nintendo, like they work really, really closely. And Nintendo has been featuring Astral Chain uh, in, in the recent Nintendo Direct, but we haven't heard anything about Bayonetta. So I do expect to hear something from Bayonetta. I should probably bring up Astral Chain right now. Astral Chain also from Platinum Games. We don't know anything about that game. We've seen some gameplay footage. It was very confusing. It seemed like you had two characters that were tethered together in some way. Are these characters where you're sharing the Joy-Con with somebody or or is it like online play? We really don't know how that game works. All we know is that it looks really cool. And I know that there's a lot of people excited for it, but we I don't think that we have a release date for it. I think 
I, I think I heard a rumor that it was August, but I, I can't remember that off the top of my head. Uh, but Astral Chain and Bayonetta 3, I really think we need to hear something from them. Uh, Coop Rider in chat is saying, what if Nintendo had a Nintendo game streaming service? Uh, 8K Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, Coop, I don't see that happening. I, well, okay, let me rephrase that. I expect all video games at some point will be streaming. Every game in the future will be a streaming video game. That is the future of video games. It's it's once the internet is is fast enough that it doesn't really matter, then it's it's going to be a weird ask to to ask somebody to buy a device when any device could be your console. But I don't think we're quite there yet for Nintendo. Um, obviously, if you've listened to my podcast, Stadia Cast, you know that I am bullish on game streaming. But, I mean, that's for me. Like, I have very high-speed internet. I know that a, v a vast majority of the United States does not have very high-speed internet. And a large portion of the world doesn't have high-speed internet. Nintendo has never been on the cutting edge of technology. Nintendo is a company, and this is Mr. Gunpei Yokoi. He's the guy who invented the D-pad, the Game Boy, the Virtual Boy, the Game and Watch. Okay, he invented all that stuff. He is a legend in Nintendo's history. And he had this motto that Nintendo, like they focus on using old technology in new ways and streaming is not old technology it's brand new technology it's something that is not tested over and over and over uh, i think nintendo wants to wait until the the streaming technology is much more mature and robust and uh more foolproof really before they they cap on it do i think that in the future nintendo is going to be a streaming company Yes, I do, but I don't think we're there yet. And I think it's going to be a long time before Nintendo's there. I think that we will see, obviously, Google Stadia will go there first. I think Xbox and PlayStation will also go there as well as anybody else. And Nintendo is going to be the last holdout for selling you hardware, at least in my opinion. I could be wrong, but there you go. Uh, anyway. A uh, little aside, uh, let's see, what else are we uh, looking forward to? Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. We know that, uh, I don't think that we have an exact date. I know it's going to be probably end of November, beginning of December, something like that. Uh, there was a leaked Pokedex that came out today, I believe. It might have been yesterday. Um, but that included um, Galar forms of Pokemon. If you didn't play Sun and Moon, you might not really know what I'm talking about. But uh, for, for example, in Pokemon Sun, which is the one that I had, or maybe I had Moon, I can't remember. Whichever one I had, um, I ended up catching a Rattata, which is how I like to say it. Hakuna Rattata, a wonderful Pokemon, okay? Uh, but I captured a Rattata... And it was a an Alolan Rattata, which means that it looked like a different... Uh, it looked different than the Rattatas that you had seen before. Um, and it looks like the leaked decks online for Sword and Shield is going to have uh, new forms of old Pokemon, which is kind of cool. I think it's neat that they're showing that different Pokemon live in different places and evolve differently. Um, that is how evolution works. You know, the, that the organism evolves in order to best survive in its, uh, in its, uh, environment. And so that's why the Alolan, um, Rotata had, uh, sunglasses. I don't know. I can't remember if it had sunglasses or not. All I know is it looked different. Um, but Pokemon Sword and Shield are we going to hear much about it from at E3? Well, probably not, because we've got uh, tomorrow, we've got a Nintendo Direct. Uh, they're, they're, they're jumping the uh, the shark. Jumping the shark? That's not. They're, they're skipping the line. They're jumping ahead. And on June 5th, which is tomorrow, at 6 a.m., 
uh, so uh, uh, Pacific time, which is I will be at work uh, when this happens, so I won't be able to live stream it. We've got about 15 minutes of new information about Pokemon Sword and Shield. I don't anticipate that they will talk about Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield at all in the Pokemon, or I'm sorry, in the E3 Direct, which is happening on June 11th. Uh, so that, that's just how I, I figured that they're taking the Pokemon stuff, which they know would overshadow everything else because it's Pokemon, and they're just getting it out of the way ahead of time. And I think that that, at the end of the day, is a very, very good move by Nintendo. Uh, so I don't anticipate that in the E3 Direct we will hear anything about Pokemon other than maybe they'll say, oh, and by the way, here's the here's another uh, reminder of the release date. And I'm sure that we'll get a release date uh, tomorrow. Um, Link's Awakening. Oh, God, I mean, I really want to know more about this game. I'm anticipating probably December, I'm guessing for a release date for Link's Awakening. I, my hat just fell off the wall behind me. Uh, that scared me just a little bit. Um, anyway, uh, I, I think maybe December. I don't really have anything, like anything, any inside knowledge or anything. I'm just making a guess based on the other things that are happening. Uh, Cadence of Hyrule, I anticipate, will be out on the 11th during the Direct. Nintendo's gonna be like, and by the way, here's Cadence of Hyrule, which is the really cool uh, roguelike Zelda rhythm game, which is a, it sounds like an impossible combination of things, but if you played Crypt of the Necrodancer, which it's based on, then you know it's gonna work fantastically. Uh, let's see, what else? And I have to look at the time real quick. All right, um, Luigi's Mansion 3. I'm anticipating October. It's a ghost-focused game. It's gotta be October. It's got to be the end of October for crying out loud. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, and that's where, why I'm putting things where I'm putting them. You know, you put Luigi's Mansion in October. Uh, you throw um, Pokemon in November. And then December, you bring up uh, Zelda. Like, there's the there's the tentpole titles to, um, to, to buoy Nintendo's sales uh, at Christmas time. I think it makes uh, perfect sense. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, super excited for that game. I can't wait to play it. I loved the first one. The second one was better than the first one, although I didn't beat it. Uh, the first one's super easy to beat because it was so short. Uh, but I, I love that game. It was so much fun. And uh, Luigi's Mansion 2, or Dark of the Moon, Again, I, I didn't beat it because I get distracted by things, and that's that's just me. Bill does not beat games. That's how it that's how it goes for me. Uh, Damon X Machina. We know that that's coming. I'm not excited for it at all. I played the demo. I thought the demo was just kind of boring and not exciting. Hopefully, they take everything that we said about it and have made some changes. I really felt like it was very slow and clunky combat. And I know you're in a giant robot. The giant robot moves slowly. That makes sense. But it just didn't feel fun to me. So I'm really hoping that Damon X Machina uh, sees some kind of improvement. I'm going to guess that that game is going to come out in July or August. Uh, honestly, just just a guess, though. Um I, I, I'm sure that we will get a, a, a date on that. Um, listen, we've got a, I've got a long list of stuff here that I want to talk about. Uh, let's take a quick break from our sponsors and we'll thank our sponsors. And when we get back, we will talk about the rest of this list because this is taking me a long time. Buy a ColecoVision and a Coleco game cartridge by November 15th. We'll send you a free Cabbage Patch Kid by Christmas. All right, we are back. Metroid Prime 4. Oh, man. I'm completely torn on whether or not we will hear anything. I don't think the game is going to be released this year. And I think it would be better for Nintendo if they didn't mention it at all. However, Metroid Prime is a big deal. Like, it's a really, really big deal. And people are very, very excited for it. And a lot of people were extremely disappointed when Nintendo recently did their little um, their little video. I don't know how recent it was now. It seems like it's been a while. Uh, but they, they put out their little video, which was explaining how 
they were scrapping everything that they'd done so far and they were redoing it from the ground up with retro studios and a lot of people are disappointed that that means it's longer before we get um metroid prime 4 but i personally am just happy that it's retro studios because they're the ones that did it the first time and I looked at the list of people who are still working at Retro, and a lot of people that are working on this game, well, I'm sorry, a lot of people that are working at Retro were working at Retro when uh, Metroid Prime like came out. So does it make sense for Nintendo to mention it if it's not coming out this year? I don't think that it does, but sometimes Nintendo feels like their hand is forced. Honestly, I think the only reason that we even knew that they were making Metroid Prime 4 is because of Metroid Samus Returns, which uh, came out in the Switch's first year. Uh, it came out on the 3DS. And it came out on the 3DS, and Nintendo was like, if we have a brand new console, and we don't mention that we're working on a Metroid game for it, and we release a Metroid game for the 3DS, people are gonna be really angry. So we have to show that we're working on Metroid Prime 4. So all they gave us was a title card, which the internet exploded when they did that. And I think that that was a mistake. I don't think that they had a choice, but I feel like telling us about Metroid Prime 4 before they knew it was ready was a mistake. Uh, so will they make that mistake again because they still feel like their hands forced? I don't know. Um, I would love to see something, but I also wish that they'd, uh, you know, play it a little close to the chest and just say, hey, look, it's not coming out this year. We don't need to talk about it. They're like, it's going to be jam packed already. Uh, something else I'm hoping to hear about is town. That is the game from. Uh, Game Freak, which is the company that makes Nintendo, and Town is actually a working title. We don't know what the name of it's going to be, although Project Octopath Traveler was a working title, and it ended up becoming Octopath Traveler, so who knows? I don't know anything about it. I think it looks cool, uh, and I want to know more. Super Mario Maker, I think that they will spend a lot of time in Treehouse, and they won't do... I don't think that they will show anything except for maybe just a release date to remind people that it's coming out very, very soon. Kind of the same thing with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I feel like there's a lot of information out there about it, or at least a lot of footage. And it's a known quantity. We already know what Marvel Ultimate Alliance games are like because we've played the first two. I don't anticipate that uh, the third one is going to be wildly different from the others. So I don't know that it really needs to be in the direct, especially because we already know about it and it's coming out soon. Uh, so I think that we'll probably see some Treehouse stuff just to kind of pump it up, especially since it is an exclusive. That being said, it's an exclusive and it's a pretty big exclusive. So it might make sense for Nintendo to put it in the direct. Who knows? Uh, speaking of uh, Treehouse and things that are coming out soon and things that we already know a bunch about, Fire Emblem 3 has been featured pretty heavily in the Nintendo Directs in the past. With it coming out soon... I don't feel like uh, the Direct is the good place for it. So I I think that we'll probably see a bunch of it in the Treehouse. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm not happy that it's coming out like the same week, I think, as Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Maybe even the same day. But I am very excited for Fire Emblem. I'm a big, I'm a big Fire Emblem fan, and I'm looking forward to playing it on console because it has not been on console since I started playing it. My first Fire Emblem game was Fire Emblem Awakening, which was on the 3DS. I had a blast with it. I played the next one and the next one. So I played three Fire Emblem games and Fire Emblem Three Houses is the first time that I will be playing it on a console. So I am super, super excited. Uh, I do think that we will see maybe not a lot of information about it, but uh, probably a release date for Dragon Quest XI-S which is the version of Dragon Quest XI, which is a fantastic game. I have it on my PS4, uh, but it has some exclusive Switch features where you, like, you can play in 8-bit mode or maybe a 16-bit mode. I can't remember. Um, I think we'll, fi we'll finally get a release date for that. Um, my Dark Horse, the thing that I, I hope happens, but I'm starting to wonder if it'll ever happen, 
is some Pikmin 4 information. Like Nintendo told us back in the days of the Wii U that uh, Pikmin 4 was done and just ready to go. And they've just been sitting on it, refining it. And it's been a really damn long time and Pikmin 4 is nowhere to be seen. I don't know why, but hopefully we'll find out something because I know that there's a lot of people who adore the Pikmin games. Myself, I played Pikmin 1. I thought it was really cool. I enjoyed it, but I didn't go back for the others because it didn't really grab me, like like really grab me. Uh, not as much as I wanted to, wanted it to. Um, I I expect to hear something about Shin Megami Tensei 5. Uh, there's a lot of people really excited about that. I've never played a Shin Megami Tensei game. Uh, this will be my first one. But because so many people are so excited about the idea of Shin Megami Tensei 5, I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, Castle, Crasher, Crash, Castle Crashers Remastered is also coming out. Uh, we don't know when. Uh, so I would expect to probably see that along with a bunch of other third-party stuff like Doom Eternal, uh, Jumanji 2, uh, all of this, uh, like tons and tons of third-party stuff. I feel like this is going to be the year of third-party stuff on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so those are all the games that I've talked about in the last 20-something minutes. They're all games that we know are coming. Like, we know all of those games are coming. Oh, and Ghostbusters. I think we'll probably uh, have an appearance from Ghostbusters because Ghostbusters is 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 exciting to a lot of people. Uh, so I, I anticipate that. Um, we, we have rumors of Witcher 3. We've got three new games from THQ Nordic that may be coming to the Switch. And, of course, there's always rumors that Super Nintendo games are coming to Switch online. I mean... Right now, there's a rumor out there that there that the e, that the E3 Direct is going to be about 45 minutes in length. This is from the Peaky Bird tw uh, tweeted this, uh, as all birds do. All right, they tweet things uh, about 45 direct. Uh, I'm sorry, 45 minutes, which is exciting. I mean. It's going to be really fun taking apart that 45 minutes. I can't imagine how long the episodes are going to be of Nintendo Switchcraft after the 45 minute direct. Uh, that being said, it's just a rumor, but like all that stuff that I was just talking about, all that stuff is stuff that we already know is happening and it needs we need more information on it so this direct is going to be absolutely packed this might be the direct that i am most excited for ever like i am so stoked for the nintendo direct which uh by the way let me just re uh, refresh everybody's memory uh the nintendo direct is on june 11th at 9 a.m pacific that's 12 p.m eastern and just to double check, so that is one week from today, all right? One week from today, all of these answers, all of these questions will have answers. And that is very exciting. Okay. Uh, that's my E3 direct uh, predictions. I would love to hear your predictions. There are lots of ways that you can get a hold of me. All right. The best way is to tweet at me at runjumpstomp. Use the hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft. Let me know what your E3 predictions are. Call and leave a voicemail by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash voicemail. Uh, click on Nintendo Switchcraft. Leave a voicemail with your E3 predictions, but keep it short because it's going to cut you off after a minute. You can join us over on the Discord. We've got an awesome community Discord filled with fantastic people. Um, runjumpstomp.com slash discord. And, uh, you know, those are the ways that you can get a hold of me. You can also come to our live shows on uh, twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp and hang out with us there. I know it seems like I'm wrapping up the show, but I'm not because I still want to take just a few minutes. Oh, man, we're already at a half hour. You know what? I've got my predictions done. I'm not going to do it today. Uh, Final Fantasy 12 is I was going to talk about Final Fantasy 12 which I've been playing a lot of. I'm probably about 12 hours in so far, and I'm having a blast, but I'm going to save that and talk about it on the next episode. 
And don't worry, I won't I won't spoil anything, but I just want to give you my thoughts on on the game so far. I'm having a blast with it. And uh, so the, I guess the, the short version is TLDR is uh, make sure you pick that game up. Don't sleep on it. If you've not, if you've never played it before, then pick it up. Uh, but I'm having so much fun on uh, Final Fantasy 12 for the Nintendo Switch. I also have a couple other games on here uh, on my Switch that I really need to uh, do videos on. I've got one for Crystal Crisis. Uh, Ghost 1.0 and Unepic. Uh, those are all games that I got review codes for and I have yet to make videos for. Uh, so I've just been so swamped lately. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get those out. And if you haven't already uh, subscribed over on the YouTube channel, make sure you head on over to youtube.com slash run, jump, stomp. Uh, yeah, youtube.com slash run, jump, stomp and uh, subscribe over there. And every time you watch one of those videos, just hit that thumbs up button. All right. Um, before we get out of here, I do have a an email uh, from Nick. Uh, Nick says, hey, Bill, I'm a 70-year-old gamer. Love your podcast. One of my all-time favorites is Super Punch-Out on the Super Nintendo and the Wii version. Do you think this will ever show up on Nintendo Online? Your thoughts, please. Well, I kind of talked about this a little bit. The idea that there's always rumors that uh, that we're going to be getting the the next uh, the Super Nintendo stuff for Nintendo Switch Online. Fingers crossed. I really hope so. Uh, right now, Nintendo is kind of they're, you know they're drip feeding us the NES games, and it's not generating a lot of excitement. Those NES games are not generating a lot of excitement. So I really do hope that. Uh, they, I, I hope that that's something that they're going to unveil at the E3 Direct uh, one week from today. Is and Nintendo or Super Nintendo games are coming to Nintendo Switch Online. I would be very excited for that. Um, Super Punch Out is a game that I've never. Well, that's not true. I've played a, like a couple times, but uh, only on emulation. I never actually played the original. And having some being somebody who played a lot of the original Mike Tyson's punch out on my Nintendo. The differences in those two games are just enough to turn me off from the game. Uh, but they're so similar that it makes me want to play it. So, um, I'm not a huge fan of super punch out because I didn't really play much of it. And every time I try, I'm just real bad, but maybe I just need to get good. I would love to hear, uh, again, from you, Nick, let me know the reason why you're such a huge fan of Super Punch-Out over the original Punch-Out. Um, and you're 70, so it can't be because you weren't around for the original. So um, I would love to hear your thoughts. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, I already listed off all the ways that you can get a hold of me, so I won't do that again. If you want to support the show, super easy to do. Runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. There are ways that cost money of supporting the show. There are free ways of supporting the show, like using my Amazon affiliate link. It definitely helps. I use that money to buy games to talk about on the show. If you want to check out my other shows, which you should, I don't know why you haven't yet, um, make sure that you do. Uh, Run Jump Stomp is my general gaming show. Uh, fantastic. I've been having a blast talking to, uh, interviewing other people like David Brevik and Scott Johnson and Brian, uh, Dunaway. And, um, I've got another guest coming up in not soon, but soon ish. Uh, and there, it's a pretty big get. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, so make sure that you subscribe to run, jump, stomp to, uh, to, to listen to those, uh, interviews and just my general gaming thoughts. Uh, I would appreciate it if you did. Also, I'm still considering bringing that over and having it be on the fr on this feed on Fridays. I had a lot of people reach out and say, Bill, that's totally fine. Do it. I had like one or two people say, please don't do that. I'd prefer if it's separate. And I understand. Uh, but, you know, if one completely outweighs the other, then, then I'll, you know, I'll probably push my hand one way or the other. Uh, the other show that I'm on is Stadia Cast. Comes out on Sundays. And hot damn, uh, the sixth 
we've got some really important stadia stuff and it's and on on uh sunday the 8th i think it's the 8th let me look and make sure it's the 8th yeah on sunday the 8th it's going to be me my co-host lloyd and patrick beja uh, beja are going to be talking we're going to be dissecting everything that has to do with with google's big stadia announcement so make sure you check out that show my other shows you can find, again, runjumpstomp.com slash shows. The music you're hearing right now is Corneria, Star Fox Remix by Noteblock. Check out their stuff on YouTube. I'm out of here. Stay awesome. Bye, everybody.